Hello, today we're going to look at metallic bonding, and this is the kind of bonding that happens between the atoms in metals. In fact, it can be between the atoms in metals, or it could be between the atoms in alloys as well. Alloys are mixtures of metals. So how does this all work? Well, we could take a look at some metal that we have here on the screen. This is some copper wire insulated by some blue plastic material, but we're interested in what the copper wire might look like, a little rectangle there. So we could expand that out and you would see the atoms arrange something like this. So we've got the metal atoms there and we've got electrons on the outermost shells of those. Now they don't all have one electron in the outermost shell. I'm just showing one there in the diagram just to explain what kind of happens next. Now these electrons are quite loosely held on to the atoms so they can quite easily move away from the atoms. When they move away from the atoms, remember electrons have a negative charge, when they move away from the atoms that leaves the atom or in fact makes the atom into an ion. So all those ions have a positive charge and we have the metal ions there as you can see and those electrons that have moved away from the atoms we call those delocalized electrons. Electrons that are in fact free electrons or free to move around or throughout the structure. So we can just see that each of those electrons has a negative charge and that gray area there that's basically a sea of delocalized electrons in other words there's so many of them we have a big area between the atoms of negative charge and it's that negative charge that acts like a glue and holds together those ions so the positive ions are attracted to the negative electrons in the what we call the sea of electrons okay so this is how the atoms would then be held together or the ions would be held together in the structure of a metal. Okay so we can uh, take a look at that and in one or two other ways that you should be able to recognize and the first way here we just talked about already so we can see that we've got the positive ions and the sea of electrons as we just saw and as you saw again the ions are attracted to the negative area in between each of those ions there. Now there's one other way you need to be able to recognize it, or two other ways in fact. The first way you should be able to recognize it is a diagram that looks like this. And we can add a couple of labels. So there in the middle we have our positive ion. So that's the metal ion. And as you can see it's got a positive charge. And the electron around the outside there, that's our delocalized electron or, or our electron that's free to move. Our second diagram, looks a bit similar. We've got our metal ions there, but the gray area there, that's where we have our delocalized electrons, or you could call it a sea of delocalized electrons. So the electrons are represented by the gray area, and that gray area there is negative, and the negative gray area attracts the positive ions and holds them together in a strong metallic bond. So what if we had to describe this metallic bond or metallic bonding? Well, we could list it as a set of bullet points and they would go a little something like this. So the first thing we haven't mentioned yet, but it's probably important to uh, mention, is the fact that metals have a giant lattice structure, or you could say they are in layers of atoms. So giant lattice structure, layers of atoms. We could also say that there, there are delocalized electrons. We sometimes, or a couple of times so far, we've mentioned that as a sea of electrons, which is okay. And... Very importantly, lots of students miss this out when they're talking about metallic bonding. The positive ions and the electrons attract each other and that's what forms the strong metallic bond between those ions. Okay, we could tidy that up a little bit so it's slightly easier to read and there we have the way we would describe our metallic bonding. Sometimes if you forget how to do this or how to describe this bonding, you can use a diagram in the exam I would use something like that one, the one on the left is slightly too complicated perhaps to remember but if you can remember it that's very good but the one on the right hand side certainly would be easier to remember as long as you label the area of delocalized electrons and the positive ions and remember we don't talk about molecules when we talk about metals there are no molecules in metals they are all atoms or ions and Sometimes people mention molecules and you will not get credit for that. So that's it for metallic bonding. We've got one, more, one or two more videos on the structure of metals, but for now that's it. Thank you for watching.